do. I'm going to be touched by the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty full. This has been a beautiful church service already. Yeah, beautiful. Delicious. Delicious manna. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I want to, uh, there's no expression that says, uh, you know, is it uh, wobble till you gobble? You heard that? Anybody hear? Huh? Oh, it's gobble. That's, that, you know, that's right if you think about it. I'm glad you straightened me out on that, Aaron. You're going to be a good mom. Uh, yeah. Because isn't that what it is? You gobble? And that, isn't that what we've done this <laughs> past few days? We've gobbled till we bobbled. <laughs> I felt like that. <laughs> and then we're going to go home this here in a little bit and eat some more. So, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving time of year. What a precious time. What a precious time. We got so much to be thankful for, don't we? We really do. We've got a lot to be thankful for. But even though, even still, you know, Thanksgiving can be a really tough time too. Thanksgiving, for a lot of people, Thanksgiving is really hard. You know, there's things that, that happen a lot of times during Thanksgiving, and, and it, then every year you remember it and everything like that. And, uh, and actually, Thanksgiving and Christmas, more people, more people are depressed during that time of the year than any other time. And so, you know, we, we, we need to do everything we can. We've got w just to take our focus and put it on the r at the right spot is what we do. Uh, one thing we do, you know, as a whole, one thing we do is, is we just go way too fast. You know that? We just, we just go way too fast. We need to stop and, 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 and just smell the roses. What in, in the remaining time, a lot of you still have family. Just stop and think about, you know, all the things that you've got to be thankful for our family. I mean, we had three sets of four generations uh, of family here today dedicating their child to Jesus. I mean, I mean, each one of you got family. I mean, we, we, had, uh, we had an opportunity to sit around our family. And uh, we had like two, it wasn't a big crowd, but it was like 22 or 23 of us in, in just a little circle there. And we went around the circle just giving thanks, all the things that we got to give thanks for. So I thought, you know, what could I share today during this time here? And I want to make some, I want to make some, uh, a quick point. Um, I want to give you an early Christmas present. I want to, from the Bible, what I want to do is I want to teach you today how to be thankful when you don't feel like being thankful. Mm. Think about that. I think that's the key. I think that's a very important key. And I'm going to use one of my very favorite Thanksgiving characters in the Bible, and his name is Daniel. Out of the book of Daniel is what I want to talk about. So let's open up the Bible. Open up your Bibles, smartphones. If you got them, you can beat us there. They put it up. I think they're going to help me put, maybe put it up on the screen here too. The book of Daniel. I'm going to start in Daniel chapter 6. Now, I'm going to kind of catch you up here. Most of us know the story of Daniel. Da Daniel was a captive Jew, right? Think about that. He was a captive Jew, all right? He had been taken captive when Babylon, you know, destroyed Jerusalem. He had been brought, ripped away from his family, right? And brought into Babylon uh, there to, to serve in, in this new faraway country. Um, but, but we know that God blessed Daniel, didn't he? God blessed Daniel. You know, why did God bless Daniel? Well, one of the reasons in Daniel chapter 1, remember, Daniel and his friends purposed in their heart that they, that they were going to follow God. Even though they'd been ripped away from their family and friends and everything like that, they purposed in their heart that they were going to follow God. And, but we know that God blessed he, God blessed Daniel and his friends. And they rose up in the ranks and, and, uh, and were where they held really high positions. That's where we're at here in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 1. Daniel 6, 1. And it pleased Darius. Now, Darius was, the, was the, over, the, over the Medes and Persians. Now, Babylon had been defeated. This big kingdom had been defeated by the Medes and Persians. Darius was the, was the king. He set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one. 
that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. All right, now let's get a picture here of what's going on. Daniel was a what? A captive Jew. He, he was like, a, he was one of them, right? And here God had, uh, had put it on Darius' heart to put him over the whole realm, right? That's what it says. He was over, he was like the second in command over all of them. Now, think about that, how this would work in our politics here today. I mean, that would be almost like, um, I don't want to pick a name. I'll pick, here's the name, Saddam Hussein, like putting him in, you know. That would be unheard of, right? Do you think that it might have got a little bit of jealousy? Would that stir up a little, uh, a little stir in our political parties that we have today? Would that do it? Well, it did it here. So the governors and satraps uh, sought to find some charge against Daniel. Yeah, they were jealous and concerning that kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was what? Faithful. Because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We should not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. See, he trusted in God. Even though he couldn't see past the situation he was in, even though he can, he, he, it, by total faith, he trusted in, in God. In verse 6, So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps and the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Wow. Think about that. Think about what just happened there in, 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 this, in this story here. You know, now, think Daniel had a good life going. I mean, he had, he had rose up the ranks here. I mean, he, he, he was very successful. He, he, had, he had made it basically to the top. He had this big, big two-story house, right? You know, with the beautiful view and everything. He had everything going for him. I'm sure that it would have been pretty tempting right here. It would have been pretty tempting not to pray, right? Like his custom was, it would have been very tempting not to pray. Or at least not pray to where everybody could see. Maybe not open that window wide open. But <laughs> that's not what you see here. You know, how would you respond? How would you respond? I mean, you had everything going on for you. And all of a sudden, you were, you were faced with this. What would you do? What would you do if, if you were tested today to stand for your faith? And does your faith in God determine the way you live your life? I mean, is it is that important to you? I mean, think about this. Now, I don't want you to miss verse 10. I think this is the most important text in the whole book of Daniel right here. I do. Verse 10. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Daniel knew that the writing was signed. He knew it was signed. He knew it was. And he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day. Oh, just in case you miss it, guys, I have faith in God. I have faith in God. What, what comes first, obedience or faith? What, that's, that's a riddle. What comes first, the, the chicken or the egg? Faith comes first. Faith. There's no way that we can truly be obedient apart from faith. He, he trusted in God. He had faith in God. Faith in His Word. That God could do what He said He could do. Within every promise in the Bible is the power to fulfill that promise. Within every promise. 
He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed. And what did he do? He gave thanks before God as was his custom since his early days. I believe this is the key right here. This is so important right here. So in, he gave thanks to God just like he had always done. He gave thanks to God even though he could lose his life. He, he gave thanks to God even though he was going to be separated from his family. Even though, even though he could lose his high exalted position. Had a great paying job. He gave thanks to God. He put God first. He had faith in God. Even though he could lose everything, he gave thanks to God. He gave thanks to God, even amidst all that. You know, lot, lots of times when we're telling this story, we jump straight to the lion's den, don't we? And we miss this really important part right here. You know, right in the middle of his storm, right in the middle of COVID, he gives thanks. Faith. Faith. The just shall live by faith. Here's the point I want to make here. I'm going to make simp three simple points. Three very simple points right here and I'm done. Because I know we're hungry. All right? All right. Yeah. First off, point number one. Point number one. Thanksgiving is not a feeling. It's not. It's not a feeling. It's not Thanksgiving. You know, you know, COVID, COVID, that's been bad. It's been bad. There's been a lot of hurt and the pain here. Life, life, life can, can, can get busy. We, but, but, but what I've been through does not compare to what Daniel's going through. I want you to think about this. And then let me just bring it back here and put it in perspective. Because this, this is a teaching from God here. Let's go back, let's travel back 400 years ago to the very first Thanksgiving. To the very first Thanksgiving, 1621. 400 years ago, the Mayflower brought Plymouth Rock 102 pilgrims. 102. In the first year, over around half of them died. I'm not for sure exactly. Over half of them died. So we were, we were like, I brought this up at our family get-together. You know, and, I, and, and it was like, like I said, like 23. And I said, think about this. And think about this in this room today. Half of, in the year's time, half of them died. They come here seeking prosperity and new life and freedom. And, and half of them died. It was cold. They didn't have food. Disease set in. A half of them, especially they are older and they're younger, their weaker ones died. Could you imagine that? And then, and then they come together. They come together 400 years ago, even still, November 1621, and they gave thanks to God. You see the teaching that, that God is trying to teach His people here? They gave thanks to God. I guarantee you they didn't feel like giving thanks to God. When they looked around the room, my heart would be broken at the loss of my family. My parents and my, and my, and my children and my grandchildren. No, it would just be broken. My, my, my whole hopes, my, all my dreams crushed. It would, just be, it would just break my heart. You see, Thanksgiving is not a feeling according to the Bible, according to a message from God, thanksgiving is a choice. It's a choice. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. The Bible says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything, no matter what you're going through, give thanks for this is the will of God. So regardless of the condition, regardless of the situation, Paul later on said in Philippians 4, in verse 11, he said, I've learned that no matter what state that I'm in, therewith to be content. He was in prison when he wrote that. How, is he, how are you doing this? How could the pilgrims do this? How could Paul do this? By faith in God. 
faith in God. Trust that God is just going to work this out. So regardless of the condition, it is God's will, the way to deal with life, even the hard times, is to thank Him. It's life's antidote. This is a message from God, a prescription from God. So you see, thanksgiving is not dependent on good things happening to you. Right? Not dependent upon that. So, no, thanksgiving, thanksgiving, and don't miss this right here. The way that you can have a thankful heart is, is, is it, that it comes from an eternity focus. It's rooted and grounded in faith that God is able, that He is a sovereign God, and that He is able to bring good out of the bad. That, that He, in the long runs, can make it right. It's incredible faith in God is what it is. So point number two, point number two, keep your eyes on the prize. That's how you've got to live your life. This is, this is how you do it. You keep your eyes on the prize. The secret to a thankful, blessed life is viewing life in the lens of eternity. That's how we got to face life. That's how the pilgrims faced it. That's how Paul faced it. They looked past their situation that he's in. I've learned, therefore, to be content. He looked past that down the road. Hey, this road is tough I'm going through. It's hard right now. It's, 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 it's breaking my heart right now. But I know that God's plan for me and my family is eternal. This too will pass. We're going to make it, brother. We're going to make it, sister, because God's got a plan for us. It's eternal. Praise God. That's the main point here. So, point number three. Point number three. Third point. Life will be better when you have faith and you trust God and you go ahead and you just start thanking God in everything. Life will be better. No matter what you're going through, I promise you it will be better if you thank God going through it. It would just take your focus off the problem. It won't overwhelm you as much. I've been through some hard times. And God has taught me this very hard lesson that I will get through it better when I'm thanking God going through it. Really. So who do you think was blessed uh, when, 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 the, when the pilgrims started thanking God? Do you, who do you think was really blessed when they started doing that? See, what they did, they lost half their family. Who do you think was blessed? They were blessed. Because it took their problems off their poor loved ones that they lost. And, they, and, they, and it put their thoughts So, hey, we're going to have a great big family reunion. There's going to be a day that we look forward to. The Bible promises that there'll be no more pain. There'll be no more suffering. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more death. That lifted their spirits. God is so good. He, he's so incredibly good to us. So I want to challenge you right now today. I want to challenge you to choose to give thanks. I don't know what you're going through right now, but I'm sure some of you are going through some pretty tough times right now. Pretty difficult times. But I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to thank God. Thank God. And I want to encourage you to slow down. Slow down. Man. We've all been guilty. We, we're trying to make a make a buck we, try, we, become, become, we become so a slave to it it steals our joy slow down slow down spend some time writing down things that you're thankful for invest in that invest in your happiness write down carve out some time in your schedule and write down things that you're thankful for family friends help eternal life thank God for this so much to be thankful for. You know. You know what the main thing is? The main thing. Is that we make it. <laughs> That's the main thing. Let your family know. What's really priority. Let your children know. What's really priority. Let them know what's. The top priority. Point them to Jesus. Teach them to live their life. With an eternal focus. There's only one way that we can do this. There's only one way. There's only one way that we can have that obedience. 
There's only one way that we even have a desire to have that obedience. There's only one way that we're going to be able to live this thankful life. But it's easy. It's turning our eyes upon Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him up on the cross dying for you. He went through that so that He can... See, we get it all wrong. We, we think the way that we get through our problems is by focusing on them and chewing on them and, and thinking about them and, and trying to fix them. And that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verse 6, that, that by His stripes we're healed. Not by focusing on our stripes. Not by focusing on our pains. Not by focusing on our problems do we have healing. But it's by focusing on Him. It's something about focusing on Jesus. The Son of God dying for me on the cross of Calvary. There's something about that. that has got a power that's beyond earthly power that we can't understand. There's something powerful about focusing on Jesus and, and, and what He did for me on the cross of Calvary that would change your life forever. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to do that. As you realize how much God loves you, it will do something in your heart. I promise you. I want to close today. Everybody stand and let's sing this little song. It's a chorus. It's not going to be difficult. Not difficult at all. You probably know it. Just turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord. You've been good to us, Lord. We've got food on the table. We got a roof over our head. We got family. And we got you, Lord. We don't have to face anything without you. Thank you, Lord. Bless this family right here. Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Pour out your spirit on us and bless us. We look to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. Happy Thanksgiving.